Welcome to The Advocate, where tropical issues are discussed in a no who's bad manner. In other words, we call a spade by its name. Today I'm calling for gender equality in all walks of life. Tolu speaks on public safety today, and to be honest, no one is safe until everyone is safe. Olari Waju speaks on business synergy and the strength we possess as a nation, and Abdul is questioning the justice system. Sit back. The panelists are here to present your Sunday dues of provoking thoughts after this break. Breaking the bias, gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. On March 8th, in commemoration of the International Women's Day, over a million women went out on the march, protesting against the rejected gender equality bill in the National House of Assembly and also the denial of citizenship for foreign-born husbands. This picture highlights discri discriminatory policies antagonizing women and gender equality. If we want to see a better Nigeria and a sustainable tomorrow, then these archaic policies should be reviewed. In past and recent times, women have gone beyond norms and discriminatory policies to etch a name for themselves in the society. The issue of gender rules and responsibility have viewed the need for sustainable input from both sexes. In order to see progress in creating flourishing atmosphere for both genders to thrive, gender-based biases could be addressed through the following. Gender equality mainstreaming in diverse sector, pushing bills in parliament that supports gender equality the need for gender equality sensitization in schools and educational institutions, enforcing laws that support gender equality beyond theoretical views, the recent agitations for a gender balanced representation in executive leadership is a worthy fight. If taken up seriously, this could start a new era for dynamism. The constitution of the country should not be built upon biases or wrong religious sentiments. No doubt, the tax at hand will be a long, worthy work that would demand men, women, and those at the helm of affairs to pick up the mantle for a positive change needed. In conclusion, any given society that envisions development and equality should be flexible enough to give worthy individuals a chance based on merit and not on gender or racial biases. Remember this. A man is as human as a woman, and leadership has no gender. So break the bias. <laughs> well, um, well, with me, I, I think it's quite sickening that um, they, they didn't go for the bill. Because as far as I'm concerned, a woman can do as much as, as, much as a man can do. And that bill just shows that our representatives are li living in stone ages <laughs> where they think uh, a woman cannot do anything. In private businesses, so we see women who, who runs their business and they're doing a very good job. Are you not saying that women, women should, not be, should not be in government? It's quite sickening to me and it's, it's, it's a decision that should be reversed to me. You're, you're right. Uh, just before you come in, let's, Mr. Tolu, I know you have so beautiful women around you, your daughters, your wife. I'm sure you have big plans for your daughter. So what do you think about yeah. this? You know how, yeah, thanks, thanks. Okay. All right, so... Um, Probably network. Uh, yeah, lost them. To me, I think... Uh, gender equality should be promoted because as a private business owner, I can say for fact that if you want to trust your business growth, ladies has been proven worthy to represent the business. So if you look at it from aspect of uh, the secretary, the receptionist, you see the way they usher in business, they win more contracts, 
they win more engagement. Then when you look at it on the basis on, on the small scale level, you can trust them with money. Money management, they are there. So when we look at productivity, women can be satisfied okay, even in spaces where you think men can actually perform. So if you give them the aspect of, say, letting them be part of the government, I'm sure a lot of policies that will be endearing to ensure we have productivity will be promoted to their participation in government. Just not just say uh, we are being biased based on religion or based on tribal sentiment or what have you. They actually have a lot to offer, just like they are building a home. They should be allowed to be part of what we are doing, government, businesses, and opportunities around the world. So I will support the gender equality. And the bill, it's just like you rightly said, it shows that we've not gone beyond reality. And we need to work with reality and allow them into the system. Well, that's quite interesting. Um, is Mr. Tolu on there? All right. So um, you've all said it. Excellence, leadership, authority, uh, intelligence has no gender. So a woman can do as much as a man can do. I, I just, I actually want to chip in a bit. And to me, if they cannot pass the law to give um, female women same rights as men, why do we bother educating women in the first place? Uh, exactly. Why do we do parents spend money sending them to school, in, um, to school, university, training them? So you just want them to, to get all this training and stay at, stay at home? Oh. We, so therefore, we should not basically uh, be criticizing any other countries that, that supp supposedly suppress women, like Afghanistan or so. No, or Saudi Arabia, that the, that the women should stay at home. Because indirectly, our leaders are, 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 are more or less doing the same thing. So really, they should, light, they should open their eyes and ears. Women are, can do as much or even better than men in certain situations. Sure. Because a woman is married, she has to cater for her family, she goes to work, and has to come home and look after her family and her husband and have time for herself. So really, in some cases, they're better than men. Sure, sure. In my view. Yeah, you have all said it, you know, just like the recent population census, um, you see that the women and the men are almost half 50-50. Half the population in Nigeria is yes. almost equal between the men mother, and women. Now, let's do the mathematics. We say there's power in numbers. Yes. If you don't allow a certain number of persons in a system to function as to their highest uh, optimum level mm. just because they are women you are going to retard that system because the system needs to survive on numbers so you are shortening like we are shooting ourselves on the leg we're excluding on, women we're only, we're only halfway we're only using half of our potential because if we don't give the women the right to excel to to expose themselves to, um, to, um, to the full limits so therefore we're actually shooting ourselves on the leg yeah, yeah right and in addition to that if you also look at it from another perspective where we, we as men, we know we have, uh, we make policies of long time policies, but at, at some point we need some instant results, instant policy. And you know, when women bring in their own ideas of say, you know what, this situation that we are in, have you tried this, their opinion? Because they are good at giving solutions, They're instant ridiculed. solutions, you know? But when we don't have that balance, we only focus on uh, the long-time goals, the long-time achievement, result, and stuff like that. What it translates to on the long run is we'll be drafting policies that are harsh, that don't conform with the reality. They are very fantastic policy, but they are they obtainable with what we, the reality is talking about. So we need a strike and balance where uh, we have the men making good use of their intelligence, right? And the women also trying to strike a balance and ensure that everything work hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. So, Mr. Tulu, yes, so seeing um, your, your view on uh, this issue, you've given the fact that you have several women around you as a strong man you are. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, I'm sure you know my views already about this. Clearly, someone is not thinking straight, you know. Again, in a world where men have to make a decision about women, 
clearly someone is not thinking straight again. Because I mean, if you're saying that you want to achieve gender equality and the men are making decisions, I mean, the majority of the decision makers are men and they're making decisions on behalf, on behalf of women, clearly someone needs to be wearing their thinking cap. You know, it's been proven time and time again that organizations have been run by women or have more women on their boards or in the management team actually perform better. Yeah, this, is, this is an empirical fact. This is fact. You know, this is not a myth. So to now say that, you know, uh, you can't give a woman the same rights as a man, I mean, like, um, like one of the times, uh, clearly someone is still in the same age and should be wearing, you know, maybe leaves and carrying a, a club around. You know, it's just ridiculous to say the least. All right. Thank you very much, my fellow. Should I save to see he for she? So let's, um, <laughs> <laughs> let's break the bias. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Up next is Tolu. Stay with us. <laughs>